Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 306, featuring the third and final, I'm sad to say, uh, part of my interview with Alexei Pashitnov, the creator of Tetris. This part of the interview, we talk a little bit more about Tetris, but also his other games, including Hexic. Uh, we talk about his uh, thoughts on Dr. Mario and some Tetris-inspired games. We also talk about board games and what he thinks about the free software movement. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. Pashitnov. So these versions, were, was there any music or sound effects? No, practically no. Probably we, we did some small beeps there, but I don't remember we did. Uh, probably some, some, some very basic sounds uh, just, just to, to finish the game or something like that. No, 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 no music, no, no sound effect, that's for sure. What did you think the first time you saw that? Was it Spectrum Holobyte or, or whoever brought out that? A version of Tetris that had the mu the music and the sort of Russian theme to it. Did you approve of those changes? Uh, yes, I approve. Uh, basically, basically, I was faced with the uh, with the very ready <laughs> game ready to sell, so I didn't have any choice. So basically, I liked it, uh, but I was much more concerned about the about the main mechanics to be reproduced carefully and uh, I was very pleased that they did a very good job on it. As far as graphics is concerned, uh, well, well, I feel, I, I feel that the very bright and simple version which I came, uh, came with was, uh, was um, Kind of more appropriate for, for for my game, but but I understand that I can't be objective, so I <laughs> I didn't uh, I didn't object very much, and uh, basically the theme was good. Well, this awful story was the was the was the plane on the red square who, who took place, which scared us a lot, but <laughs> but that's that's the other story. You know what I'm talking about, no? A, a plane on the red square? Yeah. That time in, in uh, well, in 90, I do believe it was in 93 or 94. It was a very bad political um, kind of accident. The German young guy uh, landed uh, the, the, the plane on the red square. Near Red Square, practically, uh, practically on Red Square. His name was Matthias Rust, and that was a really big deal because everybody was really afraid of kind of Soviet Empire uh, with their nuclear weapon and uh, 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 unbeatable kind of uh, air force and so on. And somehow the <laughs> the amateur uh, plane just landed on. <laughs> <laughs> in the very heart of, of this empire, you know, the scandal was awful, and uh, kind of the the minister the minister of the defense was uh, was fired, and and lots of change, and this and this poor guy uh, got a jail time for it, and whatever. So the, the, those was very embarrassing scandal for 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 Soviet power, you know. And uh, and we uh, and that was a big, very big deal that time. So uh, when we got the very first version of Spectrum Holobyte, it starts with the small plane flying, oh, no. flying on the background of this Russian church, which is a cathedral on the Red Square. We know that's for sure. We we we, uh, <laughs> we see it that way with the word Tetris, uh, kind of. That was the the very first kind of opening screen on on the game, and when we saw it, we was we we, we realized that we 
uh, creating kind of the mocking the, that we're, that it's reminding of this of the scandal and everything. So we understand that all our efforts to make a good publicity and good good game of Tetris, it's all ruined by this uh, by by this stuff. Uh, the people in Elork, which kind of uh, see it, it's become immediately pale and and understand that it's the the, the biggest possible scandal, the, the worst nightmare they could imagine. That that's what happening. In my in my view, I see that nobody really tried to kind of to emphasize this fact. It's, I understand that this is a just very bad co coincidence. So the people decide to somehow put the plane there. I don't know why, but, but, but that was a good idea. And um, accidentally, it was on the background of the church. So, so basically, they didn't have really, really bad kind of provocation in mind. So... <laughs> so we put very seriously that needs to be removed immediately otherwise kind of no deal they said no problem please we, we will change everything immediately and that was fixed so so but but the scare of <laughs> of this stuff uh, that was something i will remember for the rest of my life <laughs> yeah what did you think when you met uh, Hink Rogers? It seems like you two really hit it off. Uh, yes, he 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 came he came in in ninety five as he remember. Is that and uh, uh, well, he was the the very first uh, professional in gaming I ever met. So the people who came after the Tetris uh, Tetris license before was mainly businessmen, kind of trying to make a, a business deal. But he was a designer. He was a game designer, and we immediately recognized each other as a game designers, and very soon become friends. So, so, so that's how it happened. Did you play yeah. the various versions of uh, Tetris for the Nintendo? The the Tengen version, and then I guess Nintendo. Oh yes, yes. Do you have a preference of... for one of those? We were so so. It's uh, basically my favorite version is still Game Boy version. Uh, I do like uh, I I do like how how the version on Nintendo was set up on on Famicom computer. But somehow I didn't play it too much because I am I am keyboard man, not the joy, joypad. So I I had a problem to play with the uh, with the other uh, other hand manipulating the pieces. Usually, <laughs> usually I did show good result and and I can't play for longer. So I got. I got used to play with the keyboard with my right hand manipulating the pieces. So, so basically, that's why I, I still in love with the Game Boy version. <laughs> Probably that's that's the reason. What do you think about the Tetris Championships and the Tetris as an esport sort of phenomenon that we have? Well, yeah, that's uh, that's our ultimate goal to to achieve and make uh, and make it happen. Unfortunately, we are not there yet, and we are working very hard to get there. Well, first of all, uh, first of all, we need to come up with outrageous two-player games. Uh, for this thirty years, was lots of attempt to make. Uh, compelling to two player game out of Tetris or multiplayer game and there was really good success successful uh, versions there but but nothing as outrageous as the, <laughs> the Tetris itself wasn't done yet and we need to to get there that's that's the first what we, we what we are working on uh, the second problem, it's not a problem, but it's something to be addressed as uh, Tetris is a very good game to play, but it's, it's just a good game to watch. 
<laughs> I, would, I would put it this way. So, in order to become scenic uh, and uh, and e-sport, uh, we, we, we need to come up with the really outrageous uh, version and in terms of of observing what's going on on the screen. So you like to to watch Tetris, the other player, but if you if ask yourself whether you watch it for more than kind of minute, nah, no, probably your attention will draw to, to something else, you know. So we need to come up with the really really uh, scenic version with lots of very good, very very proper and very very bright uh, visual and sound effects and everything. So we are working on. And uh, as far as uh, as a as a competition is concerned, yes, we did lots of competition. We we, we realize many things which needs to be done. So big screens. That's that's the main issue. Very good. Uh, how you say commentator, which kind of give give lots of fun explain what's going on on the screen that's that's absolutely must what do you think about those tetris yeah, well, games played on the side of buildings well that's that's just a fun <laughs> that's the moment of my my dream i uh, when tetris was just uh, in in cradle i i i i, I I kind of dreamed about seeing it on the on the building. So finally, uh, finally, my dream came <laughs> came came true. Yes. Did you get to play it on that? Was it the Philly building? No, I didn't play. I I just watched it once. <laughs> what about your games other than uh, Tetris? I mean, we can we got Weltris, Hatris, uh, Wordtris, and Hexic. <laughs> Yeah, Hexic, uh, Pandora's Box is my uh, very important title. I I work on it while I was in Microsoft, and uh, that was the very good collection of visual puzzles. Uh, I, I I I feel that I I inventing new genre, but but that genre is not there yet. It's not. Uh, uh, it didn't come to the uh, to the position I expected to be, but 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 that was a very good title with eleven original puzzles in it, and uh, well, I am proud of it as well. Uh, Hexic was a was a was a very successful game. People still playing it. <laughs> uh, to my to my very big surprise, you know, <laughs> yes, and uh, and those new games are are well, they, they, I have a good response for the games we do for app stores as well. I'm kind of wondering, you know, what what it must be like uh, to have made a game like Tetris that is so famous and so successful. And people, I guess, look at you to create another one just as just as successful as that. I mean, do you sometimes feel like you're trapped under the, the shadow of this thing? Well, uh, well, it was a period when I uh, when that really really bothers me that I couldn't come up with anything kind of even even close to Tetris. Uh, but later on, I I I realized that uh, well, if I want to continue to be game designer, I need to overstep it, and I realized that I like all my childs, no matter how successful they are. If if I if I if I publish the game and I like it, so I like it. <laughs> I like the image of the, the, the children, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good way to way to put it, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you play games like Bejeweled or Candy Crush yeah. Saga? Yes, I did play. I uh, well, I try to not miss any uh, any interesting interesting game. I like Bejeweled very much. I did play. I didn't play. I I, I can say that I'm very very good player in it. But I played it a lot, and I love it. As far as uh, Candy Crush, uh, that, that's that's the bejeweled. We, we are talking about the same game, so <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, I like this flow game. I, I'm I'm wondering why people are not crazy about it because it's a 
really, really fun game for me. <laughs> I'm going to check it out after this. Yeah, please. <laughs> right, here's a question from Jake Parr. He wants to know, are there any Tetris-like games like Dr. Mario or Columns that you enjoy? Uh, well, I, 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 it was a period where, 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 when I really love, uh, fall in love with Dr. Mario. I played it a lot. It's a very good game. As far as Columns is concerned, uh, somehow I got tired very soon out of it. But it's, uh, I can't say any, anything bad about it. It's, a, it's an interesting game. Something with the visuals with this game is is not kind of uh, was not there you know uh Puyo Puyo is a very nice version and i i was proud that i did even i even work on it i did the puzzle uh, puzzle mode and several levels for Puyo Puyo I do remember this work and Puyo Puyo was kind of done very very well and very uh, very professionally so as a tetris Cologne, Puyo Puyo, probably the best. All right, so just a couple of last questions here, Alexi. Mm -hmm. uh, one, I'm wondering if you saw that video with that electric mechanical version of Tetris. Mm, I, I'm like, not sure the, what you did. Tetris or something like that. Mm. I think that was the name of it. I can send you a link to it later if you want. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Is it another interface or what? Well, this was what they is... actually made a Tetris game that was instead of being a video game, it was a mechanical contraption. Mechanical. Mm -hmm. So just board game with the Tetris pieces. Yeah, I can find it for you real quick if you don't mind. No, 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 no. I uh, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying. Uh, yes, I, I've seen several of them for thirty years. It was. Three, no, 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 no. Maybe, maybe far, uh, far, uh, five or six different border game based on the Tetris pieces uh, kind of published. The board game which you, which you play. One of them was very funny because people need to grab the pieces as quickly as possible, and it was forbidden to play with the long nails in this game. <laughs> so, so I I did see see them, but but I think that uh, well, that's the Tetris inspired something else. <laughs> Yes, here's a pretty fun question. I thought it's from uh, Michael Selva. He wants to know if you have you ever thought about designing a board game. Board game. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I I did I did several board games uh, myself. Uh, I, I did design and uh, somehow somehow more, maybe my games were, were too complicated to 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 be really published or i was very at, attracted to the computer but i do remember that i was very excited myself with the game called Domino, which used domino pieces and dice together and i put it on computer and really pushed hard many times to publish it but uh, it was never published because the computer was was the very wrong setup for it. Probably it should be, should be. Uh, I should publish it more by by the Milton Bradley or traditional board game, board game publisher. So I did I did design several board games, but I wasn't very good with with it. The answer is, <laughs> yeah. Right, so you feel like one one last question. Yeah. Okay. Also, so this is back in 2008. I saw an interview you had done. It was uh, posted on Slash Dots, where I, I came across it. And it was in a different language, but you said something about free software. And the quote was, "I want first. I'll run this by you and see if this is accurate or not." Uh, so they yes. quoted you as saying, "Free software should never have existed." You know, yes. I was wondering yes. if, you, if that's is that accurate translation? Yeah, or? yes, I, I'm. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't remember me saying it back in eighty in two thousand eight, but I could sign sign this words now if you wish. <laughs> so, so, what do you What so, do you not like so, about so, it? Well, uh, well, basically. Uh, 
basically if if it is just just the very small piece of software which which young guy who need to show off uh, came up with and tried to please his friends that's fine i uh, it it might be it it might be free, but 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 generally the good game is always a very uh, as a result of very hard work of several people, and uh, I just don't understand why why those people should work for free. Mm, well, it uh, it never happens in <laughs> in this world, you know. So and uh, it's uh, it's a very uh, it's a very honest and normal work which doesn't provide uh, doesn't make anyone kind of immediate millionaire or anything like that. It's a, it's a hard job which needs to be compensated and uh, and the price of uh, on the uh, and and small small price of the on the game should should make it. I I feel it's it's absolutely normal and uh, and proper way to 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 develop this stuff. So people don't uh, the, the somehow people uh, people are ready to to pay kind of almost four dollar for a small cup of coffee and enjoy it for ten minutes, but but they. They they have trouble to 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 pay kind of half of this price and 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 get uh, three four hours of of really good time with uh, with the game. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I feel the same way about you know, none of these YouTube <laughs> videos. And every now and then I get some comment that why don't you know how dare you ask for support for this? You know, you should just be doing this for free. You know, like it's well, it's work you know it's fun but it's also it's a, lot of work. it's a hard work and uh, and basically you know I'm not that much concerned about it because I know that for sure that it will come to to, to norm sooner or later but rather sooner than later right I really hope so it's just a period when uh, when it's a very big mess in industry when when lots of new customer come uh, what we what we're observing for uh, for last kind of six eight years you know the, 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 there is a mess and uh, and uh, there is no really good setups and attitudes are are really strange around but but sooner or, or later so so the serious company step in and will put the order in this mess i really hope <laughs> so and that's all for this week's episode i hope you guys enjoyed that Hope you'll uh, forgive me if I'm uh, sound a little bit hoarse. I've got another one of these uh, dad blasted uh, infections or whatever that's going around. My wife got just got over it. Now I've got it. So hopefully this will be done. <laughs> I can get through this before it gets any worse. Uh, as always, I want to thank you very, very, very much, guys. If you have supported this show, uh, it really means a lot to me. Uh, guys, you have no idea. Uh, like Alexi said, you know, if you want to go out and buy a cup of coffee for four bucks and that's, you're going to enjoy that for 10 minutes, you know, isn't your old buddy Matt uh, who's making these uh, Matt Chat videos worth, uh, you know, a couple of bucks for a show that you enjoy for much longer than that. So, again, thank you very much. It really means a lot to me. Uh, okay, let's see. What about that news from the Matt Cave? So not a whole lot of news, uh, a bit of personal news. I, don't, I think I might have mentioned this before. This is the last time I'll mention this. I don't want to spam you guys with it. But uh, the Gameplay DVD is now available. It's out. I don't have a copy of it yet myself, but uh, hopefully we'll have those soon. It's from uh, PBS. It's $19.99. Uh, I'm not sure what the shipping is on that. Uh, somebody had asked me. I think, we, I think we figured out it's not available globally. You know, not exactly sure what countries. I think he was from Hong Kong. So he wasn't able to get it. Uh, if you guys are able to get it, though, if you live in other countries, let me know. I'd like to have a better idea of you know what we need to do to get it to you guys in other countries. So, uh, thanks for that. Uh, if you want to get a signed copy, you know, just let me know. Uh, we can work something out with the shipping. 
maybe I could just order it. You could have it sent. Probably best for me just to order it and then send it to you. Uh, so let me know if you want that, and we'll see. What, we'll, I'll see what I can do. Okay, what else do we have here? Uh, Shane Stacks wrote in about the or that 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 documentary E.T. or Atari Game Over. I don't think E.T. has anything to do with the title, but <laughs> that cartridge is part of it. Uh, anyway, they they uh, the news item was about they uh, had an eBay auction for some of those cartridges uh, that they recovered from that landfill, and apparently they sold for over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. The news the article said that they sold a copy of E.T. Made it sound like it was just one copy of E.T. for ten thousand uh, dollars. That can't you know I can't believe that. I mean I have a copy sitting back there that. Uh, I'm pretty sure I couldn't get ten thousand dollars for, uh, but anyway, it's pretty impressive, you know, just for basically garbage fill uh, with with game cartridges. Uh, and then uh, Thamer sent in a uh, some news about a game that's coming out. It's in alpha right now. It's called the Westport. I think it's. I uh, can't read my own head or handwriting here. The Westport Independent, and this is a game about censorship, corruption, in newspapers. And I was taking a look at it. The graphics kind of remind me of a uh, one of the Sierra classics, maybe something like Beneath the... A little bit like Beneath the Still Sky. I'm trying... There's another game that it kind of reminds me of. I can't uh, place right off the top of my head. But it looks, it's got kind of a retro vibe to, the, to it. And it sounds like it's on a pretty cool topic. So uh, check that out. Uh, I think you can download a little demo of it if you'd like to play it around. All right, so I guess that's going to do it for the news. Uh, what about that ale of the week? You know, probably drinking an ale is not the best idea right now, but... <laughs> But I guess it can't hurt anything. Uh, this is a JP's Old Sod. Uh, a road less traveled. Irish Red IPA, Irish style Red India Pale Ale. So that's a pretty, I thought that was a pretty interesting mix. An Irish style pale, uh, India Pale Ale. Uh, I haven't had too many of those, so I really don't know what to expect. Adventurous Brews with a Twist. Now, I was looking on the can, I don't, well, they're, it's the Jane Page Brewing Company. They're out of Stevens Point, Wisconsin. And I've seen these, uh, I've seen these around. I don't know if they'll be available where you are, but they're fairly widely available, not just here in uh, Minnesota and Wisconsin. Let's see, I just don't see anything else on the can worth sharing. <laughs> it's got a pretty cool picture of there. <laughs> I guess that's the old sod and his dog there on the can. Anyway, let's get this open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this old sod here in the rather excellent drinking horn. You know, I've been trying to to figure out what this smells like, and I guess I'm a little bit congested because I just can't really do much with it. I can smell some hops in here, maybe a little bit of a scotch, uh, scotch or bourbon barrel like uh, uh, aroma to it. Uh, but anyway, it smells pretty good. Uh, definitely nothing, <laughs> nothing bad in the uh, aroma. Uh, I'll give it a taste, though. Maybe I can taste more than I can smell. Well, it's definitely a little on the bitter side. Uh, you get kind of a bittersweet uh, flavor there. Slight metallic taste. Uh, there's something else going on there I can't quite identify. Maybe a little bit of a champagne, a raisiny kind of flavor. Uh, I'll try it again. It's like it doesn't really know quite know what it wants to do flavor-wise. Uh, it's not bad though. It's just definitely something different. I guess I haven't had a lot of red ale, so I'm not really sure what it's supposed to taste like. Uh, it's definitely a little bit bitter. Uh, then it gets sweet, and then you get sort of a, an interesting sort of hoppy-like uh, flavor at the end there. It's, it's not bad. Uh, I'm not sure what the alcohol content is uh, on this, but it's, it tastes kind of strong. So I'm guessing it's something like six, maybe even seven percent. Uh, maybe you guys, <laughs> guys could look that up for me. Uh, but all in all, it's not a bad choice. Uh, I don't, again, I'm kind of hard to uh, to rate this one because I don't know much about red ales. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to go, I guess, three out of five drinking horns on this. And, you know, not a bad selection. Definitely something different. Uh, but you know, there's lots of other better tasting ales, including some from that same brewery. So, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And hopefully before my throat completely goes. And I found a, I was thinking about a labor and I found a good quotation from uh, Aristotle, uh, one of my favorite philosophers. The end of labor is to gain leisure. See you guys next week.
Who's that then? I don't know. Must be a king. Why? He hasn't got shit all over him. 